Okay, I suck at filming. I just realized that I just unloaded the whole bed. I think I can salvage it, but it was on time lapse. So anyways, talk about this bed a little bit more. Um, it's uh, 42 inches by 49 inches and about, uh, I believe 12, yeah, 13 inches deep. And then I did uh, in the last couple uh, years, I did add this, um, aircraft style tie down track. So these are the ones that we, you can just put the tie down points in anywhere. I actually really like that. Um, not only uh, the functionality of it, but it kind of helped the look of the truck too. Gave it a little bit more going on back here. But this is the, the hidden compartment here for the upper part of the doors. So there's a drawer in there and then the upper part of the doors, stores in that space. And then the rear windows panels actually store in the bottom of the tub behind the seats. So let's me take the, uh, let's me take the whole top with me. And, uh, I force myself to do that now. Funny story. I, um, I left the, I left the top panels at the truck one year, uh, for a Rubicon trip, uh, cause the weather looked great and it was only like a 20% chance of showers, but that turned into a, uh, 20 hour rainstorm up on the Rubicon trail with no, no top, uh, everything got, you know, I still had the, the top panel, but, um, you know, it was blowing sideways and getting everything and everybody super wet. So I made a rule after that, that even though it takes me an extra 15, 20 minutes to store everything, I always take the, the top panel or the window panels. I call them the top panels, the window panels with me, no matter what. So yeah, storage, uh, I guess I have to go over the bag concept again because it was on time lapse. <laughs> Anyways, the I you saw the tire and the four bags that came out of the uh, that I store inside the tire. I don't carry a wheel, and so that gives me a ton more storage space. I have a cooler that fits in the a round cooler that fits in the wheel hole also, and then these four bags, my my old Titan tool bags, go in inside the tire. So those fit really well on the tire. And, and that is a tool bag, a parts bag, which is vehicle specific for spare parts for this vehicle. Uh, I think there's a bunch of stuff in there, but you know, things like a uh, spare starter. And, um, I think there's a sector shaft for the steering box. Uh, some other interesting things like that. Uh, that one is fluids. So, everything and then all the fluids are in a waterproof bag so that works both ways so if something was to rupture in there it's all contained in the bag doesn't leak all over the vehicle and then this one is the fix it bag which is 
universal type stuff for fixing the vehicle. Uh, there's some spare metal in there, some welding rod, some uh, all thread to make fasteners from a couple different sizes or diameters and uh, lengths so you can make make stuff out of that and and that type of stuff, some electrical and and that type of thing. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the rough storage. And then at the front of the bed, you can see here, I have a small shovel and an ax that kind of are pioneer tools that live at the front of the bed. And those are actually hidden kind of under this front, uh, front edge, if you will. So that's nice for keeping things out of the way. And they, they just live there. They always have a home and, uh, yeah. So that's the storage space on the, on the LX 45. I'm going to sweep this out real quick and, uh, take a look back here for a couple little things, uh, and then swap the, the tire, the new tire in here, load all those bags back up in there. And then that'll be, be done. I do have to do a, one thing that will be coming. I don't have parts yet, but on this trip, I'm calling it the double doozy because we're doing the Deucey Ursham trip, uh, or the Deucey Ursham trail basically twice. We're going having to go both directions because of the, um, the Courtright Dam closure. They aren't letting people drive across it after October 1st. So to get all the way to Courtright um, and do the whole trail, you have to do the whole trail and then do the whole trail back. So I'm calling it the double Deucey trip. Uh, this is a trip I do, or this is one of the trips I do with friends, a close group of friends that we get together once a year. We do a week long trip like this. And this year it's kind of turning into something epic. But anyways, to do that, the fuel requirements for that are going to be pretty substantial, uh, doing the trail both ways, uh, each way in that trail is 40 miles, which is about two Rubicons long to put it in perspective. And so it, you burn, burn through quite a bit of fuel. It's not super difficult, but it's definitely difficult. Um, and so to do the trail both ways, and then when we're coming back, we'll have to go up Thompson Hill, probably burn a little bit more fuel that way. So I'm taking, uh, quite a bit of extra fuel, somewhere between 10 and, uh, 20 gallons of extra fuel. In addition to the 27 ish gallon tank that is in the Lexus. I'm not doing that all for myself, but we have a big enough group. We have some smaller vehicles that might, um, be a little questionable on how much fuel they can carry. Uh, so I'm going to carry a little extra just in case this trail, especially if we had issues toward the court right side, uh, is very long, very remote and taking extra fuel, especially a little bit of extra, extra fuel is good practice. Um, last thing you want to have is like fuel anxiety, uh, in, when you're uh, a day or two away from, from civilization easily uh, on this trail. So yeah, I'm gonna get this sweeped out, put some stuff back together. working on prepping the uh, LX45 for this trip across the Deucey Ursham Trail. And I uh, wanted to show you this. I found these fuel cans, uh, kind of the race style five and uh, half gallon fuel cans. Four of them fit across the back ahead of the spare tire. Um, whoa, that's bright. Almost perfectly. Uh, actually it is perfectly and that's why I'm running four of them because it just looks so cool. I'm taking, I would say, extra, extra fuel. Uh, the LX45 has a 27-ish gallon tank in it. Uh, I'm thinking for the trip uh, doing, so we have to run from Shaver Lake, which is the last gas stop, and we're going to run up to Kaiser Pass. And then from Kaiser Pass, we're going to run the Ducey Ursham south to north to Courtright. The dam is closed at Courtright, so we can't run it back. 
we can't run the traditional loop. So once we get to Courtright, then we have to run the trail all the way the other direction too. So we're running the trail twice. Um, and I think rough numbers based on what I used last time, kind of guess and kind of not, um, we need about 30 uh, to 35 gallons of fuel per vehicle to, to make this trip. So I'm gonna take uh, some extra for some other people that might have that, uh, you know, um, a little bit more unknown mileage uh, vehicles that haven't done this kind of trip before. Uh, and this trail is just really, really remote. And so taking a little extra in case we have problems or need to stay an extra day or tow somebody out or up Thompson Hill or something like that is just good, good practice. Um, I'm trying not to take the world here. Um, you know, I don't like overpacking, but I think if I am gonna take a little extra of something, taking a little extra fuel and not having to worry about it is the good thing. So uh, yeah, fuel cans, they fit up here really, really nice. And uh, what I wanna do, um, so I have these, uh, you know, this, Air traff, air, aircraft track on top of the, the bed rails. And so uh, they have these little uh, clip-in mounts. And those just happen to line up perfectly with this little channel right here uh, through the cans between, between the breather and the main neck. And I could just run a strap across there. Uh, but what I'm thinking is I want to make something that is more cleaner, whatever. So uh, before anybody says, I know it's, I know it's going to come up. The antenna doesn't go there. I only have to move it there to get the LX in the garage. It's it's that close. So there's a a magnet mount um, disc, 3M VHB to the roof up there. So that goes up there. Anyways, what I'm thinking is I'm going to take some of this three quarter inch tubing and I can just put that here across all of the sorry my camera work anyways just trying to get y'all in here well hey how you doing whoa whoa and I will just build a small bracket right here um, that this this kind of clips into or or cams into in this little area a little triangle looking hook bracket that'll hold hold this tube down and maybe have something that like leverages and bends it down a little bit so it clips in um so that's what i'm going to work on i'm going to throw you guys on a on a time lapse here i think and uh, make a little template for that bracket So we got these little brackets made up real quick and they fit like this. And then there will be this little amount of gap tension on there. I will uh, probably do this one or one of these first on the end, uh, tack it in place and then do the other side and then I can trim um, 
this bracket down until I get the the click in fit that I'm looking for. So that's the plan. I've got this three quarter inch uh, round tube that we were working with earlier that's gonna do that cross brace um, hold down for the new fuel cans just on the bench here. It does have a, I just use a basically a lead shot bag to hold it in place. And then I do have the seam as a reference for uh, the middle and center. And so that I think is going to work pretty good for getting this all together. And I'm just gonna use some shim material here to try and get that bracket up to the center of the tube here. Um, pretty easy. And then do you want to find some way to hold that down? And I think I am just going to um, tack these for now. so I can get a test fit on uh, the tension. So something like that. And And then the fun part is we're going to have to put these on the other direction and keep it kind of level. I guess I could go, nah, let's do it this way. So I'm just eyeballing that that bracket over here is level. This isn't rocket science. It's just garage fabrication. I do try to do a good job, but Sometimes I think people get a little bit carried away. Even I get carried away.
So one thing that sucks about uh, getting older, so I definitely wear glasses. Um, I usually wear contacts, um, but my depth for like welding and stuff these days um, is actually better without the glasses, but sometimes you forget and my welding helmet doesn't fit with glasses. And so, yeah, anyways, it's always something. go up on amperage for tacking a little quicker. This tubing's pretty thin, but these brackets are eighth, so it's nice just to be able to get that tack in there real quick. All right. Excited to test fit this thing. I think I might have to come up with some kind of um, lever to let me like lock it down, uh, like to give some extra leverage. Um, but we'll see. Hold on one second. guys there we go all right moment of truth so, Ooh, that is tight. So the backup plan here is that I can, I can, I, so I can slot these holes out with a file a little bit more, um, but I think that's pretty good. Oh, <laughs> no, no, it's not <laughs> broke. <laughs> broke one of my tacks. So fix that real quick here and then I'll be back. All right, let's try that again. So Oh yeah, there we go. Pretty good. I don't think those will move. I mean, there's a little bit, but I think once they're full of fuel and everything, that'll work out pretty good. Not trying to totally reinvent the wheel here, but yeah. So that holds all four cans real easy. I do think I might have to stash a little cheater cheater tube somewhere um, and everything, but 
pretty happy with that. So now I just need to weld up the, weld those up final and we'll call it good. So while we wait for the paint to dry on the uh, hold down for the fuel cans, um, i can show you the last, uh, last piece of kind of kit for the back here that I normally carry, and that's my uh, cooler solution. So uh, I found this a couple years ago on um, Amazon. I haven't, I, I need to look and see if they're still available. I hope they are, but anyways, it is a round cooler uh, that fits in the rim hole almost perfectly. So, um, this tire is uh, kind of funny that way. <laughs> it hasn't, hasn't moved down yet. <laughs> Anyways, but the, the cooler fits in the, in the center of the tire, so that uses up the space that was the wheel. Um, it's a smaller cooler, but it is one of those kind of super insulated ones, so it does uh, hold ice for quite some time. I usually do uh, like frozen water bottles, so I don't get wet in the bottom of the cooler, not ice. Um, so yeah, it'll keep, as long as you're kind of mindful about getting in and out, um, it'll hold hold cool for about a week. Uh, and for me, that's, that's plenty for this, this kind of truck. I, I do a lot of trips without any kind of refrigeration at all. So, um, you know, it's kind of a luxury to have the cooler, but I need to figure out a way to kind of hold this down. Um, my old pickup points for the straps were kind of down underneath this forward can. So I think I'm going to have to combo um, with these, uh, tie down points that the bar is going across or something along those lines. I do have these, uh, I don't know if you can see them on this side, but maybe on this side, I do have these, these, uh, straps that I added to kind of help weave through the, um, the tie down straps. And that usually lets me, if everything's working, access the cooler without having to unstrap um, anything, which is a nice benefit. So other than this new spare tire being super weird for uh, um, being poked out like this instead of kind of being down in, um, that's about the only, the only thing that is weird right now. I wonder if I'd be better off just using another, a second. Uh, tie down point. I do have, I do have some more of, of these, um, big bag of them actually. So that might let me not have to worry about moving things as much. Um, so let's try that. Makes me feel a little bit better. At least for a mock up here.
So usually when I do these trips, my I put all my um, my main gear bags. So I have two dry bags. They're about uh, I think 60 liters a piece. Uh, one's my clothing uh, personal gear bag, and one is my sleep system, which is my my hammock um, and tarp setup. And they they usually fit right there. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit um, extra, if you will, on a. Uh, on this trip uh, with all the extra gas that I am carrying, but still I think I'll be, I'll definitely be pretty light um, other than the gas, but I will be uh, um, I will be bulkier than I have been in the past, which is kinda unfortunate, but happens. I don't know what I got going on with this strap. Ridiculous. Making all kinds of noise. All right. Okay. That's pretty good. So like the, the cooler wants to bounce, if you can hear that. So it's like, le it's, it's like levitating uh, about like an inch and a half off the floor or an inch. And so it's going to do this when I go down the trail. That's not going to work. So I think I can just add a, uh, like a section of uh, two by four, two by six. under it and that will let it um, have something to, to squish down against and hopefully that solves that problem. Okay. It is nice. I do like one kind of, I don't know, pet peeve, something like that, um, with gear is I like to organize my gear so that the things that are most often used, so like daily, daily things like, um, you know, getting into the cooler or, uh, you know, getting your sleep gear out, getting your personal gear out, uh, doesn't require you to undo a bunch of straps. Um, keep the strap stuff, try to keep the strap stuff. So you only have to do it like once a day or, you know, maybe even not have to do straps to get, get stuff out. Um, just, I think it makes life easier. Can you always do it? No. Got this piece of piece of wood here. Be a good piece of cribbing, anyways, if I needed it on the trail. So let's try that. Definitely makes the cooler up a little higher, which is eh, kind of good, kind of bad. That's I kind of have this rough this rough rule of thumb that I try to go by for packing that I try to keep the gear below the, the, uh, bed rails of the vehicle. And sometimes that's possible. Sometimes it's not, but it's a good goal to shoot for. I think kind of keep yourself in check for, for gear and not take the world. All right. Everybody makes fun of me for like not taking anything, but then I always have stuff. So just taking your time for, 
packing mostly. Most people just like take stuff because they have space. I think that's better. Yeah. So it's not perfect by any means, but I think that'll work out pretty good and I can still move the tire down and get the cooler open without having to do anything. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with for uh, the rough organization. So kind of to sum it up, spare tires in the bed, no wheel. There are four tool bags in the, um, in the spare tire. That is a tool bag, like uh, hand tools, uh, a parts bag that has vehicle specific parts, a bag of fluids uh, for the vehicle, and then a fix-it bag, which has kind of universal uh, items for fixing any vehicle, if you will. Uh, yeah, a little bit of welding stuff, a little bit of uh, scrap material, all thread, nuts, bolts, uh, some electrical things, I think, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think that's about pretty good. And I think that's going to do it uh, for the video so far. So this would be a good place to kind of kind of turn it off, I think. I'll go paint the, um, put a coat of black paint on the, the hold down bar. But uh, that covers the, how the bed's going to be organized for now. I still probably will have to have my, my two gear bags in here somewhere. But those, those are not not in here yet. Um, but I think I could do one on this side, kind of under the straps, and then one on that side under the straps maybe. Um, and then I could still probably get the cooler open, maybe something here if I needed to. Um, I do have some corners also, but uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thanks for following along as we prep the uh, LX45 for the double deucey trip. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. And if you like this kind of stuff, give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. Of course, we're getting really close to uh, uh, 4,000 subscribers, which feels huge to me. And uh, so, yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And there's a bell if you want to get notified when I release videos. So thanks a lot. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.